Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica and in today's video, we're going to tackle our entryway. So there was nothing specifically wrong with this entryway to begin with, but I just felt like it needed a refresh. Ever since we designed this space, this actually used to be our garage and we enclosed it. We created an entryway to kind of make it make sense with the rest of the house and nothing was ever decorated. It was just always kind of leftover things that were put in this place. This bench was from our old dining set and I was just using some leftover stuff. So I decided it was time for just a refresh. We're starting new. After I cleaned out this space, Jeremy is just marking a straight line all the way across so that I know how far I need to paint to. We decided that we didn't want to stain or paint this molding, so I really needed to paint before we actually installed it. And this time, I actually took the time to um, tape around all of the baseboards instead of cutting in, and that was huge for me. Usually, I'm pretty steady, so I just end up cutting in, but it takes me quite a while. And with this, I was able to move through it quite quickly, and I think it gave it such a nice straight line. You could actually paint the baseboards if you wanted to, but that was kind of a level of commitment for this project that I was not ready for, so I just tape them off and I think it looks really good. I do like um, leaving the baseboards white in this instance. On this week's edition of what are we opening the paint can with, it ended up being some keys that I found in our junk drawer. And my husband had actually been looking for these for a while, so it worked out. You're welcome, Jeremy. So this color I am absolutely in love with. It's from Sherwin-Williams, and I believe you pronounce it andiron, but I will link it below. I wanted a dark, almost black color that would pull green, and this is exactly that. When the light hits it, it has some green to it, but when you first see it, it doesn't exactly read green. It just reads deep and rich, and that's exactly what I was going for. I did worry as I was putting some coats on the wall that this would read a little too chalkboard, but I think in the end it does not because of that um, really neutral green that it has to it. I really love it. I'm thinking of doing something similar for my kitchen cabinets, but you'll have to stay tuned for that. <laughs> For this project, instead of using your traditional molding pieces, we took some strips of red oak that we found at the hardware store and we just cut them and we didn't even 45 the ends. We just put it up there stacking on top of each other. This I believe is a one by one and then the next piece that we use is a one by two. And I really like how it came out. It's quite modern so it, it did take me a minute to get used to it but I really love it and that red oak looks so beautiful with this green color I think they complement each other perfectly So guys, I actually did this entire makeover for less than $150. Now, there are some actually cheaper options. I didn't have to buy the plant, a few things like that, and I'll let you know as we go how you can do this for even lower budget. I think $150 is pretty good considering the dramatic change that we had. Now I'm going to work on placing our photos up on this picture ledge. I am going to add some tape to the back of each photo just at the top so that in the event that they were to be knocked or nudged, they would stay against the wall and not lean so far forward. There's enough room for them to sit up here, but it's just not quite as secure as I would like. And I'm also using a fabric measuring tape because that's all I could find at this point. <laughs> so the gist of what I'm doing is finding the middle of this expanse of wall and then I picked an object to use as my spacer 
and I put that right in the middle since there are six of them here I'm trying to figure out which one's going where and I'm just going to put that spacer right um, in the middle of that middle point if that makes sense and then I'm putting a photo on either side and once I do that I can just work my way out until they're all evenly spaced and secure So looking back on this footage now, I'm cracking up because I opened this door to let some light in and completely forgot that the dog was out. Didn't even realize that she walked past me and got out in the neighborhood and we live by a pretty busy street so we don't just let her roam without us and so about 30 minutes or so after this, I realized I had definitely let the dog out and I had to go out and retrieve her. She was just fine, but I, I can't believe I did that guys. So these clips are actually just a portion of how long it took me to figure out what I wanted in this space. I had pulled several different pillows and some different blankets to try to use, but ultimately I knew that I loved that rust colored pillow, I loved the texture of that waffle knit blanket, and I really loved the rug that I'm going to show you shortly. So I really based all my decisions off of that. I knew something had to go with the rug and I knew that I loved the texture in that waffle knit blanket. And then and I kind of based everything around that. So I really would say, if you're trying to figure out what belongs in your space, decide what your favorite pieces are, the ones that you really want to be a part of the design and in your room, and then base everything off of that. That's totally okay. You don't have to pick something just because it's popular or you think um, you know people might like it better. It's totally up to you, it's your space. So I ended up grabbing this pillow that I hadn't even originally pulled, and I think it works perfectly. So this rug actually inspired this makeover. It's absolutely perfect for this space because it is so thin, it has a rubber backing, and it was only 25 bucks from World Market. So originally I had planned on stopping here. I have this faux fiddle leaf fig in the corner and I love it. I think it looks very realistic, but this space lets in so much light that I felt like it was just begging for a real plant. So my tip to you, if you've got an entryway or any space really that doesn't have a lot of light, really explore getting some great quality um, faux plants. But for this space, because of the light, I really wanted to do something real. So you're about to see me swap this this out. So let's take a trip back to where this space began. It was quite cluttered. It didn't really have anything cohesive bringing it together and it was just a mismatch of things. makeover of our entryway. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos and I will catch you all on the next one. Bye!